You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension. A dimension of sound, a dimension of sight, a dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. so long? What is time? The ebb and flow of a river as we drift along, bobbing and sinking, but floating to the surface again and again and again. My love. From this day forward, we shall never be apart. This, I promise you. Kruger, I've got an idea. Who is this? Jordy, who do you think? Listen, this one's a winner. You know what time it is. Wait. Sorry, boss, but I just watched a movie and... Movie? What movie? Remember that assignment? You wanted to send me to the coast? To cover the awards, but you passed on it. Right. The Career Achievement Awards at the Academy. Jordan, surely this can wait? That's just it. It can't. Come morning, I'll be on a plane, headed for L.A. No, you won't. I'm sending the new boy. Not so fast. You remember why I passed on it? Because Pamela Morris isn't attending. As usual, so what? Well, I ran one of her pictures tonight. Her greatest performance. And this, I promise you. I've forgotten the magic. There's never been anyone like her, not even close. So here's what you do. Have you been drinking? Buddy, I'm stone cold sober. Get me a ticket for the red eye out of O'Hare. Then soon as it's morning, Pacific time, call our agent and set up an interview. I'll be there with bells on. Interview about what? Are you kidding? It's Pamela Morris. Where's she been all these years? Is she still as beautiful as they say? I'll get you an exclusive. And while I'm out there, I just might cover the awards, if you ask me real nice. Because you're my favorite editor. Do us both a favor. Go back to bed. I haven't been to bed. I've been watching Pamela Morris all night long. And tomorrow, I'm going to meet her. No matter what. Thanks, Kruger. It'll be worth it. This, I promise you. The world's most beautiful woman. Pamela Morris. In person. Introducing Jordan Herrick, syndicated columnist, whose work appears in more than a hundred newspapers. By nature, a cynic, a disbeliever, and a jaded commentator on the movie business, caught up for the moment in a lovely vision. He's not sure whether that vision is merely a dream, but he'll soon find out. Her name is Pamela Morris, renowned star and femme fatale, not seen in public for many years, whose legendary beauty is remembered by millions. Mr. Herrick is correct about one thing. Tomorrow, he will make her acquaintance in person. But what he does not know is that the face he gazes upon may actually be a reflection beamed his way directly from the Twilight Zone. And now, the Twilight Zone and our story, Queen of the Nile, starring Kate Jackson with Stacey Keach as your narrator. Hello? Hello? Is anybody... Yes, sir. I'm here to see Miss Morris. Who? Pamela Morris. Do I have the right address? This is a private residence. No deliveries. Oh, for the love of... I'm not a delivery boy. Please turn your car around. My name is Jordan Herrick. Well, you still need an appointment. I have an appointment. Check the list. H-E-R-R-I... Oh, yeah. Mr. Herrick from Chicago. Thank you. I'll open the gate. Park in the circular driveway by the main house.
Yes? Hello there. I'm Jordan Herrick. I have an interview with Miss Morris. You're early. Am I? Well, if she's not ready, I can wait. This way. Well, well. This is impressive. Take your coat, sir. That portrait on the wall. Your coat? Hmm? Oh, here. Who painted it, may I ask? I'll tell Miss Morris you're here. Yes, yes, you do that. What's the signature on the canvas? No. Can't be. Where's my towel? A young man is here to see you. Where? In the living room. Really? Tell him I'll be right in. There's no hurry. Oh, there you are. Sorry I lost track of the time. Please, don't rush on my account. You've come all this way. It's the least I can do. But it's such a glorious day. I'll be right with you. Just let me dry off. Of course. Charlotte, see if the gentleman would like a drink. Perhaps a light lunch? Yes, miss. Oh, don't go to any trouble. I'll meet you in the living room as soon as I make myself presentable. Oh, you're more than that. A great deal more. If you follow me, sir. Mr. Harry? Miss Morris, I didn't mean to interrupt your swim. Nonsense. I've kept you waiting. It doesn't matter. It does matter, and I apologize. But I do love the pool. It's my one indulgence. Am I forgiven? Absolutely. Please sit down. Beautiful. Sorry? This room. The furniture, the artifacts. Lovely. You like my little collection? Very unusual. You must have gathered these things from around the world. Oh, you know how it is. Various locations over the years for this film or that. You specialize in the exotic. Do I? Yes, I suppose so. Even the front door, that metal uh, insect or whatever it is. Ah, you saw that. The door knocker. Cast in bronze after an Egyptian beetle or so, I'm told. Do you think it's too much? Mm, no, no, no. It's quite remarkable. I've never seen another like it. Nor have I. Must be very old. Yes, it must be. I confess I've forgotten exactly where it's from. Now then, I believe you have some questions for me. Well, if you don't mind. Not if you're the one who asked them. I'll do the best I can. I'm sure you always do. <sighs> to begin at the beginning. As two people always must. Huh. You were born in... I must say, Mr. Herrick, you are very direct. Hmm? Oh, don't get me wrong. I meant geographically. No, you didn't. You meant the year. That's what the public always wants to know. You're not offended? Should I be? I have my producers, my directors. You have your editors. They are all very demanding. Besides, a woman in my position must have no secrets. I'm relieved to hear you say that. I was afraid. Afraid? You have nothing to fear here. No? Why, Mr. Herrick, I'm only a woman, and a rather small one at that. Surely you've known many women. Never one like you. Ha. <laughs> then I'll try to make this as painless as possible. Suppose you tell me how old you think I am. Well, that's hardly fair. Oh, come now. Especially after you saw me in my, well, my bathing attire. Unfortunately, it conceals very little. I wouldn't say unfortunately. Mr. Herrick, you make me blush. I shouldn't have wandered out onto the terrace like that. I did say no secrets. And I overstepped the bounds with that question. No, no, not at all. Please, be honest. Really, I... Here, take a good look. I'm sorry about the shirtwaist and sandals, but I didn't want to keep you waiting a moment longer. Time is so precious. You're not wearing any makeup, are you? Can you tell? There simply wasn't time. Yeah. Very beautiful. That wasn't the question. We were talking about my age. I'd appreciate your candor. In that case, you look no older than... than you do in the painting. Oh, everyone asks about that. I was only a child when I posed for it. Is that so? Come and see for yourself, close up. All right. Well? Oh, surely I'm misreading the signature. Why do you say that? This can't be a Bertolt. 
bad hold. I was so frightened of him. The world was bright and new to me, and he was so wildly creative. Was he? I'd never met anyone like him. It was his genius that enabled him to project the flowering of a fragile blossom, as he put it. He must have been a genius to capture you so perfectly. What a lovely thing to say. Tea, miss. Ah. Shall we, Mr. Harry? Certainly. Tea or coffee? Coffee, please. Would you like something in it? Cognac? Whiskey? No, thank you. I'll take it black. I thought newspaper men were heavy drinkers. That's a myth. At least during working hours. And are you working now? I am. Though it doesn't feel like work. I want you to feel entirely at ease. It's to my advantage, you know. Lest you think badly of me. Very little chance of that. Is it time for tea, Charlotte? Yes, Mrs. Draper. Hello. My name's... This is Mr. Herrick. How do you do? Mrs. Draper. He's the newspaperman, Mother. I know. You're Pamela's mother? Surely not... Sit down, Mother. Have your tea. It's remarkable, the resemblance between you two. Some might think so. With my mother, it is tea at this precise hour every afternoon. Mrs. Draper, you must feel proud to have such a famous daughter. Must I? <laughs> mother never did approve of my career. Believe me, Mr. Herrick, I had very little choice in the matter. She thinks I'm too headstrong. Dedicated is the word. You still are, Pamela. Tell me, was your daughter always as beautiful as she is now? Always. Now there's loyalty for you. As a matter of fact, Mr. Herrick, it is the truth. Then perhaps I should interview you as well. Why, whatever for? Well, I might learn a few important details from the mother. You... Such as the real age of the daughter? <sighs> Honestly, I wasn't thinking of that. Isn't age relative? Besides, didn't I promise to reveal absolutely everything to you, Mr. Herrick? You did. All in good time. Then I'll just have to be patient. Not for much longer. This, I promise you. Pamela, I must have a word with you. Later, in your room. I am not going to stand by and watch it happen again. You will if I say you will. I can't bear it. Mother, would you mind seeing if Charlotte has things under control in the kitchen? Not this time. Sorry if I'm intruding. I... She was just leaving. Pamela. Weren't you? A pleasure to have met you, young man. My pleasure, Mrs. Draper. Perhaps we'll talk another time. I hope so. Until then, goodbye. Take care of yourself. Take very good care. I'll try. Forgive her. What for? She's getting old. Still, she might remember a few details I can use for my story. No, her mind wanders. Her memories become distorted. Shall we finish our coffee on the terrace? If you prefer. There should be a breeze outside. I'll bring the cups. Mr. Herrick. Mrs. Draper, I thought you'd gone. I must speak with you. Why, of course, I... Leave. What? You must leave at once. Quickly, before she hears. You are in danger. I am? Very grave danger. All is not as it appears. She is not as she appears. Mr. Harry, are you coming? Be right there. What's this about? If there's something I should know, you... She is running out of time. Save yourself, young man, before it's too late. I implore you, save yourself. Isn't it lovely out here? Quite stunning. And a perfect location. I'm trying to remember... Who owned this house before you? Oh, some ancient actor from the silent days, I think. And when did you purchase it? There you go, Mr. Herrick, still trying to trick me. I assure you it was built decades ago, long before I was born. No doubt. 
I love to sit here by the hour, watching the birds and the clouds, listening to the sound of the water. At night, I watch the stars. Do you? But that isn't what interests you, my nocturnal habits. It'll fit nicely into the story I'm doing. The question of age is still the big thing, isn't it? I wouldn't say that. I can hear it in your voice. Well, here goes. I am 38, Jordan. May I call you Jordan? Of course. Is that so terribly old? Not at all. Even in my case? Especially not in your case. The years have never been kinder to anyone. Oh, you're a dream. It's the truth. Ah, I should have realized you'd take all this down. Looks like you've already written several pages. Some advance notes. Dates mostly. Do they concern me? Eh, indirectly. According to one article... I know, you've read something. A column by one of those stupid, jealous women. Well, if you don't mind me asking... Fire away. If you're 38, how could you have starred in a movie made... Let me see. 29 years ago? <laughs> I can't believe it. Jordan Herrick taken in by the printed word. Tell me, do you always believe everything you read? Then set me straight. The movie was Trails West, is that correct? Darling, it couldn't have been me. I would have had to be nine years old, don't you see? It's an old mistake. I've run across it before. Once something like that gets into the books, it's hard to erase. Well, according to our files, your co-star was John Bradley. Was it? You were in love with him. <laughs> I never even met him. Your files are in error. That's possible. Almost 30 years ago. Why, I don't believe I'd even seen a movie yet. I wasn't allowed. My parents were very strict. Oh? We were poor. We lived in Iowa. My father's business was failing. It was a few years later that I set out for Hollywood, a star-struck girl in her teens, following the same trail blazed by so many hopefuls. I was extremely lucky. You must have been. You made Queen of the Nile with Charles Danforth. When you were 14? Juliet was 12. But such an important production. Is that so much harder to believe than my true age today? You see, no one knew I was only 14. If they had, I would have been taken off the picture. I matured early. Indeed you did. I've seen the film. Have you? Shot on location, wasn't it? Oh, yes. No studio back lots then. A fabulous experience. I learned so much. And that was when you began collecting? What? The interior of your house. I take it the trip inspired the decor. I call it early Egyptian. I suppose it's silly of me, but how could I resist? It was my first big break, and I was far from home with more money than I'd ever seen before. I'm just glad it wasn't one of those horror pictures that I'd probably have the place filled with caskets. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I much prefer it this way. But really, you know, the fact is that I still feel 14 in some respects. No, let me be more precise. Sitting here with you, I feel new. I know it sounds foolish, but I want to live, Jordan. I want to savor all there is in this life. Is that so wrong? No. Come here and look at the view. You can see practically the entire city from here. The canyons, the pools. Ah, they look so blue from here. Don't they? Such a perfect color. Reminds me of something. Me too. Your eyes. You are too good to be true. But do you see what I mean? The world is such a magnificent place, full of so many wonders, too many to know in one lifetime. Maybe that's what makes life so precious, because it's so brief. Does it have to be? If we live fully, tasting everything that's placed before us like a magnificent offering, two people alive to the moment and each other. Yes. I'm being foolish again saying such things. Oh, on the contrary. We've only just met hardly seems possible. That's because you've seen my films, each a time capsule, preserved, unchanging. There's something more, something that's very much alive right now. It's just that I so seldom get the chance to speak my mind, to air my dreams. 
That's true for everyone. Is it? It is for me. If I could know there's another who feels the same way, who wants to know life to the fullest. I think it's time for you to start believing. I don't dare. What are you worried about? You were so understanding, so simpatico. Don't stand too close. No, you don't like it. Move to the edge of the hillside. You might fall. Oh, Jordan, I already have. No. What's wrong? What must you think of me? Don't turn away. Look at me. It's as much my fault as yours. I wanted to kiss you from the first moment I saw you. You're very sweet, very real, but you really must go. Why? Because I say so. But we can see each other again if you like. What about tonight? Dinner? Very well, shall we say. Eight o'clock? Eric, party of two. Mm, not for an hour, at the very least. I, I, I have a reservation. I'm sure you do. If you'd care to wait on the bar. Hello, Armand. Miss Maurice. It's been a while, hasn't it? I should say so. We've missed you. Uh, how about that reservation? The old table, I presume? That would be divine. Claude? Yes, Armand. And prepare that corner booth. But it is uh, occupied by another couple. Then move them. Tout sweet. Yes, sir. And that's our show. Ladies and gentlemen, we now invite you to dance. Darling, I don't know when I've had such a wonderful time, but it is getting late. Is it? I should call home to see how Mother's doing. Oh, don't tell me there's a curfew. It isn't that, but I do worry. Excuse me? Yes? Miss Morris, can I have your autograph? Of course, dear. Thank you, Miss Morris. Will that do? Will it? You should charge for those things. That's the tenth one tonight. Darling, something the matter? Mm, no. Nothing. We're to have no secrets between us, remember? I was just thinking about your mother. Something she said. When? Earlier today, she took me aside. I... I could have sworn she was trying to warn me. Only I'm not sure of what. Jordan, my mother is disturbed. You must believe me. I do. But her words stick in my mind. She feels responsible. For what? My father's death. They were returning from a party she was driving. And the car went off the road. Father was killed. Oh, I'm sorry. Since then, she's been suspicious, furtive, imagining all sorts of terrible things. I've tried to help her, but the doctors say it's hopeless. She's deeply depressed. She should be in an institution, but I can't bear the thought of... I shouldn't have brought it up. Uh, let's change the subject. Yes, let's. Now then, uh, I told you about me. What about you? What do you want to know? Where did you grow up? Chicago. I still live there. I've played Chicago, the Wells Theater. The Wells. Is it still always so cold in Chicago? Only in the wintertime. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I almost forgot. I was going to call Mother. Where's my purse? Oh, wait, you'll need coins for the phone. Oh, don't worry about me. Here, I'll get change. Waiter? Jordan, please. It's no trouble. Listen to me. You're a kind and considerate man, but I can take care of myself. Just don't disappear while I'm gone. Promise? You have my word on it. What's this in my pocket? A letter? Someone must have put it in my jacket. But who? Dear Mr. Herrick, you are a fine young man. I know you want to see my daughter. My daughter, but you must not. Under no circumstances are you to come to this house again. You will not believe what I am about to tell you, but I swear on all I hold sacred that she is not as she appears. The ravishing woman you know as Pamela Morris is far older than you think. She has told you her age, but she is much more than 38. 
I know. For you see, I am not her mother. I am her daughter. Morning. Jordan? Oh, I was just about to phone you. Were you? I overslept after last night. I was afraid you wouldn't call. I wasn't sure you wanted me to. Oh, now you're teasing me. I had the most wonderful evening. So did I. It was heavenly, Jordan. Every minute of it. Will I see you today? Wild horses wouldn't keep me away. You don't have to fly back? Not just yet. I'll tell Kruger I'm on to something here. Something, something that could be very big. Kruger? My editor. Don't worry, he'll go for it. Oh, I hope so. If I were to lose you now, you don't know how long it's been since I've felt this way. Stay right where you are. I'll be right over. I won't move from this spot. I'll tell Charlotte to make lunch for us on the veranda. I have a better idea. I'll take you to Musso and Frank's for brunch. Perhaps your mother could join us. What for? I thought it might be nice for her to get her out of the house for a change. Mother's not feeling well this morning. Well, nothing serious, I hope. Only the usual complaints. Her mind seems worse, though. I wouldn't want to subject you to that. As you wish. You seem awfully interested in my mother. I do? Yeah. Just a reporter's curiosity. Enough about her. How soon will you be here? As soon as I shower and dress. Till then, darling. Till then. Front desk. This is Mr. Herrick. I'd like to place a collect call to Chicago. I'll connect you with the hotel operator. Kruger. Hey, old buddy. Jordy, glad you called. Where are you? Still in Hollywood. Listen. Good. I got another job for you. If you're through playing around with that little movie queen. Almost. Do something for me, will you? Get out the file on one of our pictures. Which one? Queen of the Nile. Right. Which one? I just told you. Queen of the Nile. Well, you're a little young, I guess, but they made two of them. First one, silent, I think, around 1920, maybe earlier. I didn't know that. Get them both. Take me a minute. I'll hang on. Here it is. You there? Yeah. I got it. What's the name of the girl who starred in the original? Let me see. Uh, Constance Taylor. Never heard of her. Anyway, she starred in most of it. What do you mean? It says there was some kind of accident during filming. A cave-in at a tomb in Egypt. Real tragic. They never found her. Got a photo of this Constance Taylor? There's a clipping from the old bit. Compare it. With what? A picture of Pamela Morris in the remake. If you say so. Well? They look alike, but they would. They played the same part with the same makeup, same type of costume. The old Wells Theater. When did they tear it down? The Wells? Here in Chicago? Oh, it must have been sometime in the 30s. Why? I want to be sure first. In the meantime, I need you to do a little more research. Find out about the men who were involved with Pamela Morris. Send me every press release, every clipping you have on her. Then fax them to me at the hotel. Can you do that? This better be worth it. Oh, it will be. Sounds like you're on to something. Kruger, you wouldn't believe it if I told you. But it's something, all right. Something fantastic. Well? It's all true, Mr. Herrick. Every bit of it. But don't show it to her. Leave here at once. This picture. Is it Pamela? Yes. Yes. Please, Mr. Herrick. You don't know how it is. January 12th, 1933. Gladys Gregory and Kester Roberts at the Wells Theater. On roadshow tour, fresh from their Broadway success in Honeymoon Deferred. She had many different names. But she herself hasn't changed in what? 50, 60 years? At least 80. The sum total of my life. 
You can't imagine what it was like to see her always so fresh and beautiful while my mirror image grew seared and yellowed with age. How I longed to see a wrinkle, just one, in that baby skin face. But she stayed young, and it was I who grew bent and gnarled, withered by the weight of the years. Is it any wonder that I hate her so? Hard to imagine hating her. Take one last look, Mr. Herrick, and then go. How old is she, really? She is ageless. Perhaps eternal. That's true. What is her secret? What woman would not sell her soul to know? Surely you have some idea. It has to do with the motif of this room. The artifacts? The scarabs. The scarabide beetle, to be exact. The Egyptian symbol for everlasting life from the banks of the Nile. Mrs. Draper, if you hate her so... Why do I stay? What else could I do? After Pamela and my husband... Go on. Tell me the rest. Charlotte? I cannot. You must go. What about those other men? John Bradley, Charles Danforth, Wesley Harrington. Don't ask about them. Charlotte, was that Mr. Herrick's car in the driveway? I thought I heard... Oh, Jordan. I knew it was you. I could hardly wait. Hello, Pamela. What's she doing here? Pamela. How nice of you to drop in, Mr. Herrick. Has my mother been entertaining you? Yes, she has. Tea, Miss Morris. Thank you, Charlotte. What wild tales have you been spinning, Mother? I'm beginning to think they're not wild tales at all. Oh? For one thing, the Wells Theater where you played was torn down years ago. Many, many years. And the artist, Berthold, who painted that picture of you? Do you know when he died? You may leave us, Mother. Charlotte will serve your tea in your room. Pamela, please. I want to speak to Mr. Herrick alone. Yes, I'm sure you do. That will be all, Charlotte. I'll pour for Mr. Herrick. Yes, Miss Morris. Your coffee, black, as I recall? Yes, Pamela. Drink up. Uh, Pamela, I... Now then, you were saying? Please understand, I... Oh, I do. I'm a reporter. It's my job to gather facts. And last night, that was part of your research? Last night was special. Believe me. My, look at all these newspaper clippings. Let me explain. You've compiled quite a dossier on me. What is it you want, money? You think I'm a blackmailer? Well, if that's not it, what do you want? The truth. Ah, it comes down to this. I told you it isn't about money. I understand. Then why are you opening the wall safe? You want the truth, Mr. Herrick, and you shall have it. Come here. What have you done? Just a little white pill in your coffee. You drugged me. Don't worry. It's only a sedative. Well, why? I'm about to show you the secret. Don't you want to see what's in the box? Very well. I'll bring it to you. What is that? A rare Egyptian scarab, Mr. Herrick. The secret of eternity. Where would you... Get it? From the pharaohs who understood its power. Pharaohs? I told you, Mr. Herrick. I was once queen of the Nile. That was only a movie. Was it? Oh, yes, but I'm talking about the real thing. You? You were? Not were. Am. No. Sit down. It's easier that way. Let me open your shirt. You'll feel a slight sting as it penetrates your flesh. Then when it's fed, when it's filled itself with your life force. Please. There. Now I simply remove it and place it on my skin. 
so that it can reverse the process. Let me see. This leg should do nicely. Do you think I have nice legs, Mr. Harry? Oh, but you can't speak. You can't do anything, can you? A pity the art of mummification no longer exists. Because in a few more seconds, there will simply be nothing left to hold your body together anymore. <laughs> Pamela, what have you done? I've told you, Viola. Never come in until I call you, if you want to live another day. No, I can't bear it. Get rid of the remains, quickly. This must stop. Clothing, shoes, everything, now. Yes? I have an appointment to see Miss Morris. This way, sir. I'm here, Charlotte. Yes, miss. Oh, do you mind? I seem to have knocked over a cup in the living room. Would you see that it's swept up? All of it? Right away, miss. If I've come at a bad time... Nonsense. You must be Mr. Jackson. Yes, I called the other day. And I told you to come out when you could. Did you think I'd forget? Well, I didn't want to intrude. I must say, you look spectacular. Do I? Radiant. If you don't mind me saying. It's the weather. I so love the sun and the pool. I'm constantly refreshed. It reminds me of the location for one of my films. We shot it on the banks of the Nile River, the ancient source of life, or so I'm told. Queen of the Nile. I've seen it. Have you? But you're so young. Come. We'll have coffee on the veranda. Everybody knows Pamela Morris, the beautiful and eternally young movie star. Or does she have another name even more famous, an Egyptian one from centuries past? A word to the wise. It's best not to be too curious, lest you end up like Jordan Herrick, a pile of dust and old clothing discarded in the endless eternity of the Twilight Zone. Hi, this is Carl Amari, producer of the Twilight Zone radio dramas. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our official website at twilightzoneradio.com, where you'll get the latest news and information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas. Plus, at twilightzoneradio.com, you can digitally download three free episodes or any of our episodes for only $1.95 each. In this age of ever-changing technology, we've decided to make these episodes instantly available to you by making the Twilight Zone radio dramas a digital download-only series. This means that this series will no longer be offered on CD. The CD collections at our website are now being offered, while supplies last, at buy one, get one free. So be sure to get your favorites before they're sold out. Be sure to visit us often, and I'll see you in the zone. Queen of the Nile, starring Kate Jackson with Stacey Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and based on a script by Jerry Saul. Heard in the cast were Mike Starr, Doug James, Jeff Lupiton, Linda Ryder, David Darlow, Sarah Marks, Christian Stolte, Bob Dunsworth, Carl Amari, Vince Amari, and Roger Wolski. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. The producers of the Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises, Carol Serling, Dennis Etchison, Dick Brescia Associates, Claire Simon Casting, Terry Jennings, XM Satellite Radio, Sirius Satellite Radio, our sponsors and our radio affiliates for helping make this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Jason Mallow for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking.